I was listening to a podcast. Uh, you were not hurry talking about various things, but the main thing that I found quite good and interesting is about the free will. He says, basically, we don't have free will. And you can check it because I posted his uh, interview podcast in the description with UHL URL. But not just him. Sapolsky, a Stanford professor who teaches human biology, has been saying the same thing in his lecture that you can also check on the internet that we don't have free will. In his case, are the specific examples point. I'm not going to go into detail, but for example, if you're sitting in the hard chair, if you are in the court, your decision of voting of whether this person is guilty or not may be influenced because you are sitting in the hard chair instead of the cushy chair. There's a statistical evidence, and without that, I can also see that that uh, when we have some experience in our younger days, even if you're not remembering it because you're only one or two years old and then you may have had some experience from parents or friends, and that may be like an imprint stored in your memory, like a punishment or the you know traumatic experience or even the other you know positive experience that drives you have a bias of certain view of how you would respond. And that's also the reason why we may be too confined in our mind and not finding a way to get up out of the confinement of our mind. And if you go out, just like an AI, deep learning into subconsciousness, there are lots of information. And if the barrier is gone and I have access, I use the word connecting to heart, not just confining the mind, then you listen to what it says. And that out of that is like a, a synchronicity. All the information would self-organize itself to come up with a wisdom, idea, innovation, or awakening in various ways that you may not access only in your mind. And that's the habitual pattern that we need to be careful. And that's also the reason of the practice meditation or a simple concept but that's valuable which is Shila Samadhi Panya. Practice the right conduct of a calm and quiet mind. Go down into your subconscious, go down farther and come up with an insight which could be wisdom or compassion. Beyond the free will you think that you have. Because if you think you have it, you're limiting the access to those deep part of who you are. And deepest is where the laws of nature manifest, the nature's way, because information there has a reason to be stored, and nature has a way to utilize it to live a life better. Well, I'm saying this because I believe in it, but scientifically I'm sure well, I tend to think that should be proven. Because that's the reason of our being here, born on Earth, and being alive. We are fighting against death all the time. We just don't not realize it. But all the organs are connecting, not centrally controlled for the mind, what to do. But they work together to see if there's a virus or the pain. They adjust the blood pressure, hormone or some cells, you know, white blood cells and all that, uh, to attack and keep us alive with our mind not knowing. So that's what the reality of the biology is. So the mind is kind of beyond the biology because it's the words and logic that use and think that's the only world. That's the world that you live in. But you cannot forget that you are alive, being alive without your effort, without your thinking of how to uh, take this nutrition and digest and distribute to the heart and the kidney. You don't do that. 
from the mind point of view. It's a central controlled idea, but it's decentralized to let the, the nerve system and the, the organs and all the hormones and blood and not, everything working together. That's how we are built because of nature's way. As a part of the nature's way, we can use the brain and come up with the wisdom or awaken in such a manner that we appreciate what makes us alive and the meaning of it. You feel it, that you are connecting. And out of that is the compassion and wisdom. So the point of this discussion about free will is that free will is has to be free will of the universe, not the free will of the confined mind of who we are. Mind has a limitation. There's a bias. You may not like it to hear it, but that's a habitual pattern. When you met someone with uh, some kind of a beard or whatever, or you may feel offended or something for no reason. You just don't know it. But you had some experience in your early days that you get some bad experience with such a person. Or different ways or different culture, anything. So that creates the bias. And so if you think you have a free will without considering those and making a judgment, that's the danger. And that's the point of us to listen to our heart. When I wrote the book, Results from the Heart, I said, use the brain, listen to your heart, and live with the mission. And the Dalai Lama gave me a forward and the comment, and he's very precise. Use your brain while or at the same time listen to your heart. So without listening to your heart, thinking that you have the solution and react to it, that's limiting because of the bias that I was talking about. It's not the free will. It's a biased will that may pop up. So, Shila Samadhi Panya is the way to open up the window or the door into unconsciousness or subconsciousness, which you don't know what it is. If you haven't experienced it or you cannot describe it or see it because it's inside of you, but all I can say is that the practice of uh, meditation and the idea of Shila Samadhi Panya, right conduct, so instead of the biased conduct, you do the appropriate thing given the situation, which actually should be the representation of the Panya insight. So it's a process going around. Right conduct, have a calm and quiet mind, down deep into your consciousness, and find the insight, even awaken, and then your world is different from living in the confinement of the mind, but open to relate to the nature's way, for example, and the ideas coming up to appreciate that we are alive, come up with the idea, be awakened. So the free will become the will of the universe instead of the narrow-minded will that we think is the free will. Am I saying too much? Am I communicating? I don't know. But that's what it is. So what I said is in the concept, the reality is in practice, and that's what we need to do. Question, stop, observe your thinking, mini you, and there's a big you, looking at you, that's the discussion I had elsewhere when I had the awakening, there's the bigger existence of the laws of nature and the nature's way that is functioning all the time. You can call that as God. To realize that and you relate to that, that's the connection. I call it connecting to the heart or listening to your heart. That's the basis. And if we lose that, you, you are left with the lost mind. 
then the, that's a sad situation. You don't go anywhere, but like a monkey mind within the mind confinement. But if you have free will, you should get out of it. But when you know you can't, you realize that your free will doesn't work, no matter how you train your mind. So you have to let go of your mind. No mind. Emptiness. Nothingness. Which could be seen as counterintuitive. Or I'm talking some foreign language. But that's the state of calm and quiet mind. As the basis to connect to the heart. And listen. Your body. All things happening. Without, without your judgment. Out of that, as if we are born or reborn, we get freshened, refreshed, and connect to the way of nature, aliveness, along with the sense of Awakening from the dream in your mind. Easy to say, but each has to experiment. And if you want to ask any question, find interesting or any comment you have, just share with me. Let's figure this out keep on figuring out because life is a continuous process and though the mind chaos need to be resolved with the calm and quiet mind to find the insight more we get the hang of it maybe we are better prepared to deal with the issues that we may have in life Sincerely and truthful. Thank you.